Hello friends, welcome back to another episode. Uh, in this episode, I'll talk about how you can have your free uh, SAP HANA database that you can uh, you know, integrate with your Eclipse tooling. So a few weeks back, I think almost a month back, I created one content, uh, as you can see on, the, on, this, on the screen, where I demonstrated how you can have your free uh, ABAP uh, S4 HANA 1909 installation in your local machine uh, using a Docker, uh, from a Docker image. So this tutorial, uh, I mean, current tutorial is in basically an extension to that discussion. So in case you have not watched it, uh, definitely recommend uh, recommendation should be to just take a look so that you can get an idea the different system uh, requirement as a prerequisites and uh, different steps that you need to perform to have your system available. So you can see this uh, SAP system is there. Uh, this is already up and running, right? I just doing certain things. So it is up and running, right? So this is you can see. So now if you just check this system and status, uh, that's what I was saying, like you will have your HANA database as a default that you'll get. And this is the database I'm planning to access now. All right, and you can go to the uh, installed software. It is an S4 HANA Foundation 1909, right? Now you probably know something, uh, one second, I just wanted to show you this uh, blog post uh, written by Thomas uh, and it's uh, 2020. So it was an HANA Express Edition installation on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, where we can install a HANA Express as a free. That is one of the way, but uh, here he also mentioned different port forwarding problems and all, but that's something also it's doable. Another option would be this one where I, it was in the same year, but is HANA Express using Docker because the Docker is available was for Linux. So within this WSL, you can also go by the, the Docker process. I think this is almost the same concept, all right? And uh, in the tutorial, as you can see, also you can go for the server only deployment option. So this is another option also you can do that. Uh, so this time I thought to try as a fresh because I have my SAP running on HANA, right? So if I can access this one, I think then both sites will be there for me. Uh, one is the front end app website as well as the back end HANA access. So the plenty of different native HANA development also we can explore together, right? So that's the motivation. Okay, a lot of story. So let's get into the, uh, I mean, the process or the steps to follow. After certain research, I, I, I understood like there is one port which I need to open. Okay, what I found one second. Um, yeah, so this is the one uh, where I saw like something a port I need uh, to access this one. So three will be the starting and fifteen will be the ending, and the zero one is something uh, my system ID. Okay, so what the system ID will give according to that port will be auto mapped. And uh, after certain research, I identified it should be three zero two one five. Okay, so that is the port I need to you know um, I need to open it but when I created this particular docker container as you can see the container is up and running when I created this docker container I didn't have this port enabled okay uh, this one was not open that time so what I can do definitely I can recreate a new container out of the same image because the image will not be again downloaded it will be it is already downloaded so I just can create a new container, but I thought, okay, no need to waste unnecessary space. Let's uh, maybe just create as a fresh and keeping this port open. So what I did, I just, you know, uh, ran this kind of a command from command line and make sure that this is now open. Okay. So this is what I, you have to do also in case you are doing for the first time, make sure you just have this port open because this is required. Once this is done and my system is up and running, as you can see, what next I can do is just to make my Eclipse enabled. Uh, for my HANA development, right? So by default, those uh, softwares will not be added uh, to this Eclipse. Uh, so what I can do, or what rather you can do, you can install this uh, new software. And there you have to just use this kind of a URL. Once again, where is that URL? Um, yeah, this is the tooling site. And you can go for uh, this URL, okay? And this URL, if we just copy and go to this Eclipse and paste it over here, You'll find this SAP HANA tools. Okay, so technically I installed only the ABAP uh, and the SAP HANA because I'm not a BW guy and I don't need anything as of now on the cloud or platform thing. So I didn't install anything. So only this thing and this thing I have installed. Okay, so very simple. Just select it, go next, 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 following the wizard and accept the license agreement, accept the trusting things, and you're done. It's pretty simple, nothing much to explain. So once you do this kind of a setup, then only you can perform this kind of action, what I'm going to say now. So what happened currently, this perspective is actually HANA development perspective, but maybe in your case, it should be by default as an ABAP perspective. So you're going to do things in ABAP. 
have to change or switch the perspective called HANA. So you can click on this perspective and you can see this kind of SAP HANA uh, console or development, etc. So you'll be selecting this SAP HANA development. Once you go this, this kind of uh, things will happen. Of course, these systems will not be available. So let's delete it and so that I can show it from scratch, right? Um, yes, let's delete this one. Fill it also. So something you'll see kind of uh, nothing is there, right? Now to begin with, you'll, you'll be clicking on this add system and you need to give a host and port name. So host and port where it is, um, I always forget. Yeah. So this is the password I will need for sure. And the host name is where? One second. So yeah, host name is here, very close here. I'm copying it and I'll put this as a host name. As I said, the system ID I'll select 02. Now I have two kind of a database uh, that HANA offers. One is a system DB and other is a tenant DB. So system DB is just for having the system information of so that. And we cannot perform any kind of you know HANA development on system DB, but we have to do things on the tenant DB. So before we go to the tenant, let's go for a system because it will be available in the MDC container, so multi database container. So select this system DB, click on next. The user ID is always system, okay, for this trial version. System is the user ID. And the password, right? So password I just opened, right? So password is here. Okay, the password with which you just uh, we, we I logged into this uh, SAP system, the same password I'll be using it. So let's do that. Click on next. The port by default selected is 30215. You see, click on finish. Boom, it is added. And if you go to the catalog and you can see different schemas, one is thing is the system repo. Go to the tables and a lot of you know things you are able to access, which are all pointing to the system database, right? As you can see, that's nice. But as I said, we have to actually look for the tenant DB, and that is now going to add. Click on add system. Again, we have to copy this uh, copy this uh, host name, same host, again system ID 02. But this time, we'll not go for a multi-container concept. The reason is, this is a trial system and uh, I, I, I wasted a lot of time trying with the multi-container. Then I, later on, I realized it's actually a single container database. So it will not have a multi-tenant option on the single tenant. So it's our single container. So click on next. But now the system uh, user would, ID would be a DB user, specific DB user, and which you can find from here, from your machine, go to system status and you can see, uh, this is the user ID, okay? The schema is the same and schema and user both are same in this case. It can be different, but in this case it's same. So it, this is the user ID. Uh, hey, and password, again, I have to search for the password. Password is the same password. So if I add it, this password, and next again the same port 215 determined click on finish and it's added the tenant awesome right so now i can see the catalogs and we can see the schema and this is the schema which is all referring to our uh, developments all right by the way in the table sections you can see uh, the tables all the tables i think it's restricted to only first thousand entries so you can select something as a filter and you can put a table let's say t00 some t table i just want to see first yeah, it's filtered, right? If I double click the country table, I think my, my, my color setup and all are not much good. So it is not that way visible, but hopefully you can see the different fields and all. And if I go to the content, um, then you can see all the countries corresponding uh, language, different things, right? So you can see this data, right? So now do a little bit of very simple thing just to see really it is what, if I create a new table, what will happen? Should I be able to see it over here or not? So let's, uh, I have already created a table, okay? And this, this is the table, the test. It's nothing much there. Uh, you can see one entry. So if we just uh, access, this is the entry. So of course, we are supposed to see this data in the backend as well. So we can just, you know, click on the tables and go for a filter and we can put to see test. And we'll be able to see this table, all the fields. Uh, only two fields I have added anyway. So click on the open content and you can see the data, right? So that means it's all connected well. And uh, if I perform any AMDP creation or any core data services, that obviously will be able to see over here. Um, maybe in future episodes, I'll talk about something on the AMDP series. I'll learn a lot of, you know, uh, SQL scripting and Windows functions. We'll discuss on that. And also uh, now uh, uh, you can create your own package. I just created a package like this. And in this package, you can repository, you can have a provision now to go for different uh, HANA DB artifacts like calculation, view, attribute, analytic, etc. 
and also more of other things like for example if you go for the application they will see this lot of access developments uh, access advanced developments also you can do that right so i hope that uh, sounds uh, good to you and you, you you get to know how you can also achieve the same thing in your machine if your machine supports that uh, basic hardware okay thanks for watching we'll see you soon again with a different topic uh, take care and goodbye